entitled The Life of an Eagle. And eagles often describe great leaders. In fact, the Boy Scouts of America, uh, their highest order is that of an eagle. And so uh, we'll just go from there. But let me turn your attention to Isaiah's uh, book, chapter 40. And verse 31, and as you're turning there, I would remind you that uh, our host today, Brother Richard, as he talked about these, uh, um, you know, uh, this person that he thought was the real enemy, I want y'all to know she's in the second service, not the first service. I just thought y'all know. <laughs> I'm only messing with you, brother, but uh, he gets in trouble even when she's here. But uh, nonetheless, uh, Isaiah 40 and 31, let's just dive in, or 40 and 28, I'm sorry, 40 and 28 through 31. He says, do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord, another version said, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall soar on wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. Isn't that amazing? I don't got to run but from here to the sound booth, and I'm tired. Uh, He said, but they that wait upon the Lord, we will uh, soar on the wings like eagles. We'll run and not grow weary. We will walk and not faint. Father, I pray that you would add your blessings to this word today. God, I'm just a piece of clay uh, and, and nothing at very best. Lord, without you, I can do nothing. So I pray, God, that you would take these words, O oh Lord, that, uh, that are written. And I pray, God, that this scripture that is alive and well would move today as we speak about the life of an eagle. In Jesus' name, amen. The bald eagle is a majestic bird. He represents our great country since 1782 when he was adopted to become the great, on the great seal of the United States. Eagles are different than any of the other birds of prey, um, primarily because of their size and their more powerful build, more so than any other raptor other than a vulture. To defend their territories, eagles put on a spectacle. I mean, they put on a show. I love going to air shows, and I like to see the nostalgic, the old you know, the B-17 and the B-25 and the F-4s and all of those things. But then I like to see the new stuff like the F-35 and the 22 and all of the, the late great stuff. I can, I can watch that. I love to see the Golden Knights perform. Uh, that's the Army's demonstrate parachute team or parachuting team. And uh, I love to see the Navy's leapfrogs and all of that stuff. And they can put on some incredible aerial demonstrations. Eagles do the same thing. They will do death-defying swoops, and it seems like they're on a suicide mission, and sometimes they're, they're locked with another bird, and they're tumbling and rolling and falling all the way to 100 feet when they break away. I remember a number of years ago, me and Brother Eddie Martinez, uh, he's a skydiver as well, we left the airplane standing on the step, holding arms like this, looking face to face, and we said, ready, set, go, and we dove out, spread our legs and pointed our toes, and we held that position from 12,000 feet all the way down to 6,000, went 220 miles an hour. At 6,000 feet, we just, shh, and then we were like light years apart instantly, slowed down to open the parachute. But and then, now we we done that at 6000 feet. These eagles will take it all the way on down to about 100 feet and then break apart, ride the winds of the current and head back to the lofty heights. They are majestic. They are incredible. Um, they're admired the world over as a symbol of power and freedom and liberty. The spot on which an eagle landed, the Aztec Indians would build a city on that spot. They felt so special uh, and such a veneration for the spot that an eagle had landed. In some religions, high-soaring eagles are believed 
to have touched the face of God. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm saying that's what some religions believe. Let me give you some awesome and astounding facts about the eagle. First of all, he can stand as high as three feet tall. That's 36 inches. His wingspan can be up to 90 inches. That's seven and a half foot. Are you with me? Say amen. Seven and a half feet wide. Uh, he can fly 10,000 feet and 35 miles an hour without the wind. 35 miles an hour. My parachute flies 25 without the wind, so just so you understand. Uh, he's usually about 10 to 14 pounds in weight. Their bones are light. They're made of keratin. They have 7,000 feathers. They can live up to 30 years. They sit at the top of the food chain. They've been known to lift a rabbit that weighed four pounds. Just incredible. They're good swimmers. I didn't even know that. But, but they have unusual eyes. If you ever notice an eagle, their eyes are big, you know, in comparison to the size of their head. Their eyesight is four times sharper than that of a human with 20-20 vision. They have two centers of focus. It's amazing. They can focus looking forward and to the side at the same time. Uh, that, that's an amazing uh, um, eyesight. They have very large uh, eyes, as I said, in proportion to their heads. And their pupils, if you could get that close, they're extremely large as well. Eagles have a million light-sensitive cells per millimeter of retina. That's five times more than a human's 200,000 per millimeter. So you wonder how in the world they can see like they see. While humans see basically just three basic colors, eagles can see five. Uh, the adaptation gives the eagles this keen eyesight, which allows them to see prey that's camouflaged, you know, in limbs and brush and grass for a long, long distance. In fact, eagles' vision is the sharpest of all animals studied. And it suggests, some suggest that they can spot an animal the size of a rabbit as far as two miles away. That's amazing. You know, I, I did a three jumps yesterday, and it was clear, and it was beautiful, and I'm at Fernandina Beach, and I, you know, I point out to my student, well, that's Jacksonville, that's the Dames Point Bridge, that's Kings Bay Navy Sub Base, but we're not talking about a rabbit, we're talking about the Dames Point Bridge, you understand? And so, um, eagles can voluntarily dilate and constrict their pupils as part of their focusing near and far. They can change the curvature of their cornea. They can see a fish underwater for several hundred feet while gliding hundreds of feet over the water. Isn't it amazing? You ever been to the beach and you saw a gull as they're, you know, they're just soaring along and all of a sudden, shoo, and they come up and got a fish. I mean, they're doing better than some of you on the beach fishing. Right? I mean, it's unreal. Some of you fishermen understand about the glare, and you wear special glasses and try to keep the glare so you can see and all this stuff. Eagles, God just gave it to them. Flying 1,000 feet over an open country, they can identify prey for three miles. They can cover about 10,000 hunting acres as they look for food. Here's something that's neat about them. I, and when I studied this, it amazed me. Their fidelity. Did you understand that aerial display that they do? Two reasons. Number one, it sort of marks their tor t uh, territory and says, hey, I'm the boss around here. And also, it attracts their mate. Are you with me? Man, that boy can fly. Huh? And so they get together and they say once they are mated, they are mated for life. They don't, they don't mess around. Ain't no hanky-panky. They ain't slipping off to town. They're mated for life, and they stay there. They stay together until one of them dies. Wow, I believe Christians probably learned something from that. And then I found something else, and I thought about this as a pastor, and it sort of really got my juices going. They never move. They don't build a nest here, there, and yonder. They find a place, and they update it every year. You ladies would like that, I know. They update it every year. 
I mean, they bring in some new straw. They bring in some new twigs and some new branches. That For you, that might be a sink and some paint and, and whatever and lights. But they update it every year, but they never move. They hang out right there. They've got their mate. They're together, and they're at home, and that's the way it is. And Christians could learn something from that. Amen. But Isaiah said, have you not known? Have you not heard the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He, he, he's not weary. He don't faint. His understanding is unsearchable, and he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength, strength, and he says the youths are going to faint and they're going to weary, even the young men. I like college football. I watched it. My Tigers really performed yesterday. Whoo, hallelujah. I'm talking about the LSU Tigers. And uh, anyway, but, but I even see young men who are cut up and built and ripped, and they got all the, you know, uh, they said Darius Geis, this batted bone running back, you know, 279 yards last night. But anyway, um, they said he... You know, these cats, it wasn't him that was talking about another guy lost 20 pounds in four weeks. Come on now. Some of us like trying to get in shape and stay, stay in, play in shape and all that. He said, but even the young men get tired and weary. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up like the wings of, on the wings of an eagle. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. Listen, Christians are, are always victorious. I want you to know this. Ultimately, ultimately. But that does not mean that we don't have battles that, that we lose in. That don't mean we don't have dips and valleys and highs and lows. Ultimately, we are victorious. Let me tell you something. If I die tonight of cancer or whatever, I am still ultimately victorious. You need to know that. I'm made more than a conqueror through him that loved me, and you are too. Now, I want you to understand something. Something happens in the life of an eagle, and it's like those bad days in our life. Sometimes it's more than a day. Sometimes it's a week. Sometimes it's a year. Sometimes there's been seasons in your life where you just did not feel like yourself. Amen? Times in your life. And, and for the eagle, it's the molting. The majestic bird, something happens to him once in, or, or, or so in their lifetime, they molt out. And, and in the life of an eagle, they go through a process, and scientists say it brings on what appears to be great depression for this majestic bird. They begin to lose those 7,000 feathers. You see, their beaks and their claws begin to alter as well. The experts tell us that they'll actually walk like a turkey and have no strength to fly anymore. What a contrast for a Christian who was once sharp doing aerobatics, once that was just on the move and had keen eyesight, but now losing the feathers and cannot fly. Calcium has built up on his beak and his head just sort of hangs down and he just sort of mopes and gropes and his claws and talons, aren't, they're not sharp like they used to be and he, he has, you know, bare spots on his wing and his back and he's ugly. Any of y'all ever seen a molting bird? You understand. They lose their ability to see and uh, it is so traumatic, this proud, majestic bird, this eagle, they lose their desire to eat. They don't even want to eat anymore. You ever notice when a dog gets sick, you know that because you won't eat no more. You go over and you try, and they just sort of lick your finger and, and try to roll back over. They don't want nothing. These majestic birds that's now lost their feathers and calcium is built on their beaks and their claws are not what they, they're built up to, and they, they're just a pitiful sight. They're supposed to be majestic, but now they walk around like a turkey. They can't fly no more. They can't see hardly anymore. Their eyes have gotten dim, and everything is bad, and, and life is, just seems to be over, and it's so traumatic, and they don't even want to eat. Isn't that a picture of for Christian that don't really have a desire to come to church anymore. They, you know, a lot of stuff built up on them. And they're just sort of at home, and they, they, they have no strength to hunt and no desire to eat. And then another phenomenon takes place. that They get in this state, and they begin to peck on each other. And I thought, man, that's another good illustration of church folks that will call one another's eyes out and still say, we love Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Uh, this time on the mountain range, uh, they find a place, and uh, scientists say they find a place where the sun beams directly, uninhibited by the mountains or uninhibited by tall trees or whatever, but they find a place where they can just lay out on a rock in the middle of the sun. It seems to help them, but they're, they're occasionally, one of them will kill another one because of this depressive state. During this time, they've observed other eagles coming over. 
and, and, and they hear the screams of other eagles. What is this that I hear? This is older birds. It's not the young ones that had never experienced this, but they say this is older birds who've gone through what they're going through right now, bringing, you see, because the eagle eats fresh meat. Are y'all with me? Say amen. They kill something, they'll eat it. They'll, go, they'll swoop down, pick a snake up out of the ditch and go have lunch right now. They'll grab a rat or a rabbit and, and eat right now. Well, here they are. They can't fly. Their beak is weighing them down. The, the calcium is built up. Their claws are messed up. They got two or three feathers. That's all that's left, and they're ugly, and they're just hobbling along like an old turkey. And all of a sudden, the screaming of an old eagle. And, and lo and behold, you've seen the geese as they fly over here. Sometimes they visit our pond every now and then. You know, there'll be a good group of 15, 20, 30 of them. But anyway, they hear these eagles coming, and all of a sudden they begin to release something, and they've dropped some kill that they just now got. Isn't that amazing? And I thought, isn't that a good picture of what a Christian ought to? Somebody that's already been through something, knowing somebody's going through something that's killing them, and they're about to die, and you bring them some help and nourishment. You see... It's not the younger ones because they hadn't got there yet. But see, they, they grow weaker and weaker, and suddenly they, 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 these guys come, and it gives them some food. Some of them still roll over and die. But some of them decide to eat. Some of them decide, I've got to do something. I think this speaks of our Christian life. And this is a time in the Christian life as a believer when it's tough. And you've been stripped down to everything, and you've lost everything, and you're weighed down, and, and you just don't know what to do. But God sends somebody along and says, I've got the T-shirt on this one. i got the video on this gig. I done been there. I've already done that, and you're going to make it. Let me give you some facts about this. This situation with this eagle, when they get in this terrible situation, I want you to know it usually happens in a valley. It's not on a mountaintop. It's not always soaring in the heavens. I want to tell you, I've met some Christians that are sort of name it and claim it and frame it, and they're just, uh, they're just always, how you doing? Blessed and highly favored, praise God. I mean, they never have a bad day. Boy, if you could see them in their bedroom at night, you'd see what a hypocrite they are. I'm not saying that you don't have faith, even though you're having a bad time, and say, you know, it's, it's rough right now, but I'm going to make it. But, but I see people that, man, they're on cloud 14 every time you see them and act as though nothing has ever gone wrong or nothing will. That's just a lie. Peter, James, and John went up on the mountain with Jesus at the Mount of Transfiguration. After they left there, they had to come down. Let me say this. You do not live on the mountaintop. If you're a baseball player, you're not hitting home runs every single game. I know you might have a streak where you've hit two or three in a game. You might have a streak where you hit one in five games consecutively. But sooner or later, there will come a time when somebody's going to outpitch you, and you ain't going to hit it. You're going to strike out four times. Hello? I don't care how bad at the bone or running back you are. Somebody is going to shut you down before it's over. There's always somebody that's going to do it. Let me say this to you, my friend. There's a time when you, so much is on you. Uh, it's tough. So I want you to understand this. When that happens, you lose your desire to eat. You wonder about them people. You ain't seen them in church two or three times. You ought to call them. Hello? You ought to reach out to them. You ought to say, hey, uh, I've missed you. Uh, and let them know. You see, they should be eating. They should be getting stronger, but they've lost their desire to eat. Isn't that true of us that we find ourselves in this situation? I ain't going to life group. Uh, no, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to church tomorrow either. And it's as if, as if that spites us. It don't. It just sinks you. Hello, it's killing you. Uh, see, we don't come to church anymore to hear the Word of God. And, and here's the problem. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the Word of God. Amen? And it's the Word of God that helps us over this and helps us get through it. But our got up and go has got up and gone. When you're in this place and you're so laden down, now you, you, you walk like a turkey, your head's hanging down. You can't see very much anymore. You used to have such keen eyesight. There it is. You have no vision. And, and, and it happens to Christians. And you can't ever see yourself getting out. This is how it's going to be when you're done. That's what the devil lies to you about. But you need to be around somebody that will help you see beyond the valley that you are in. Somebody that has been through that valley that said, listen, my friend, you ain't going to die here. You just think you are. 
So listen, this is uh, that unparalleled vision now has gone. Calcium has built up. And, but here they are on this rock. They're in this valley. They're in this place, and it's hard, and it's tough, and everything they used to be, they're not anymore. Can't fly like I used to. Can't walk like I used to. Can't eat like I used to. Can't see like I used to. Can't hunt. Can't kill. Can't do anything. I might as well sit here and die. And the devil will talk you into that, and some of those birds just did that. But thank God for the screaming eagles. Uh, some eagles come over and drop some food. And uh, let me just jump into the mind of one of these majestic birds that says, you know what? I ain't going to sit here and die. I'm going to grab whatever this is. It might not be what I would have killed, but I can't kill right now. And he begins to munch down on something somebody else gave him. He begins to nibble on that. And as he begins to nibble on that just a little bit, he feels a little bit of strength come back. Hello? He feels like his head just come up just a little bit. He feels a little bit of step, you know, a little bit of strut getting back in his step. Huh? Every now and then he just start flapping them wings a little bit, and he sees some feathers that start to grow. Y'all remember Samson in the Bible? They took him and shaved his head. Do you remember that? The Bible said they gouged out his eyes and put him in the prison to grind at the mill, the, the corn mill there. He said, but I'm going to tell you what, how be it, his hair began to grow again. Amen? And he began to pray and said, God, would you avenge me of my enemies this one last time? Let your strength come upon me and the strength of the Lord come back upon him. So here's this eagle in the valley. And lo and behold, he needs some help. And he decides, I'm going to help myself. I want to tell you something. It's great to have an encourager, but David said, I encouraged myself in the Lord. There are people that will sit there and watch you die. There are people that don't really care. I hope it's not any of us. But when you get in this bad state, Man, your whole outlook changes. You can't see like you used to. And, uh, but back into the mind of this little eagle, he said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to eat a little more. And so he eats a little more. And he eats a little more, and he looks, and man, them feathers are starting to, to work out a little bit. Amen? Them feathers are starting to, to get on him. And, and then he says, you know, i got to do something else. i got all this calcium built up on my beak. And he'll get over beside a rock. And he began to bang his head against that rock. And, and, and that big calcium built up on his beak. Are y'all with me? Say amen. He begins to knock that away. He begins to whittle that away. He begins to rub his head against the rock. He begins to sharpen his claws against the rock. Are y'all hearing me? He's decided that I'm not going to lay here and die, but I'm going to help myself. I'm going to do something about this. And so he sits there until he works it out. And he sits there until he grows them out. And he sits there until he can walk majestically again, until he can bow himself up again. And one day he'll walk over just to the edge, you know, and, and say, well, I ain't flown in a long time. I, I've been sitting back for a good while, but I, it ain't too far down to that next rock. I think I'm just going to just ease off here and spread my wings. Hello? And man, all he has to do is taste flight one more time. And man, once he gets out there again, oh, all the memories come back. I took a guy skydiving yesterday who was a skydiver 14 years ago, hadn't jumped. He's from Romania, speaks pretty good English, lives South Jacksonville. He said, I just want to come and do a tandem and see if I want to get back involved. He was airborne in the military back in the day and he, he, he had his license. He jumped a few times, not a lot. Took him up to 10,000 feet. We opened the door and it was just he and I in the airplane. That was, it was just me and him. There wasn't another tandem on the load. We opened that door, seated in the door, planes going that way, tails that way, the wing is here. We're going to dive right out here. Ready, set, arch, and here we go. And for the next 30 seconds, we're falling. I opened the parachute at 5,500 feet. I got him on camera and he's, oh my God, I can't believe it. I ain't jumped in 14 years. Man, I gotta do this again. Y'all do the training here. I said, no, but I got a buddy over on the other side of Jacksonville. He does, are you with me? Once you've tasted flight and that eagle took to the air and he said, you know what? That's why God gave me these feathers. That's what I was built for. And he looked down in the valley below and said, oh, I can see again. I can see. I can fly. And I can see 
Oh, man. Something began to happen to him. He helped himself. He said, I'm not going to sit here and die. You know, something else about that. The scientists say that they'll choose a spot, kind of like this right here, where the sun can shine directly on them. Now, when you're in a bad way, and you can't fly no more, and you can't see no more, and you can't eat no more, and people are pecking on you and all that stuff, you need to get in a spot where the sun, S-O-N, can just sort of shine directly on you for a period of time until you feel strong enough to say, I'm going to get up. I'm not going to sit here and die. I'm not going to lay here any longer, but I'm going to do something. I was born to fly. I was built to fly. I was built to do this, and that's what I'm going to do. So I want to close like this. True story of how eagles teach their young to fly. They got that nest, and they normally nest very high. Way up in the crags of a mountain, real high, there they are. They got this big nest, and they have these eaglets, the little babies. Ugly, ugly. Some of y'all have seen the falcon cams uh, in Indianapolis. When, when we were there, they had the, a falcon nest on top of a skyscraper, and they had had babies, and you could go online, uh, at night and watch. They had cameras on the nest. You could, it's called Falcon View. You could watch it. You could watch the babies. Well, what, what the mom and daddy eagle do, they raise these eaglets, and when they finally get their feathers, they come in. Everything's good to go. They're eating good. They finally decide it's time to teach them to leave home. Some of y'all could learn from that. But they say, it's time for you to go. And so mom and daddy, with their beak, they just begin, if this is the nest, they just begin pushing them. And I can see little Junior here. He's scared to death, you know. He's over here on the edge, and it's a long way down, mama. But mama just keeps on nudging. She keeps on nudging. And finally just, boom, gone. And they say almost never will they open their wings. Almost never. They will sort of go fetal. And that's, that's what we tell people. We jump in, don't do that because we're going to roll and tumble and roll and tumble. And that little eaglet will tumble and tumble and tumble. By that time, Daddy launches, and he, he's on out there. And that little bird's just tumbling 100 feet, 200 feet, 500, 700, 1,000. He's just rolling. He's going to die for sure. But all of a sudden, Daddy says, man, he ain't spread his wings. Whew. He dives straight down, and he catches that little eaglet, flies right back to the nest. Are y'all with me? Puts him back in that nest. He's wore out, so it ain't his turn, but they knock the other one out, same thing. And they say usually it takes one or two times before that eaglet finally catches on and says, hey, man, I got these, these uh, feathers here and these pinions, and, man, I, I'm built to fly. So they knock him out for the next time, and there he goes. Daddy's already circling. He's tumbling again. And Daddy comes and gets him. He rescues and pulls him back up. And, you know, I'm sure they give him a little break or whatever. But pretty soon they knock him out there, and there he goes. And he tumbles once or twice, but all of a sudden he says, and he realizes, whoo! And he's just, y'all seen him ride the currents. They can stay aloft for just hours. It's amazing. They even got to flap their wings. They're so sensitive. They can ride the thermal currents that's rising and just, woo, son. Did you know a lot of our aircraft, that the wing is designed by the way they studied the birds? So God had something to do with it. But here's what I want you to know as I close this today. As you get knocked out of that nest and you're falling to your death, I want you to understand that daddy can fly faster than you can fall. Hello. Before you hit the ground, he's going to come swoop in there with those large talons and grab you and take you back to a lofty height and let you try again. I'm going to make one more point and then we're going to pray. I didn't know this, but eagles have 
I think it is three eyelids. It's crazy. Uh, it, it's kind of like this, and like it, it's 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 amazing. But here's the deal. They're the only bird that I know of, or that I've studied, that when they're being chased, because they're top of the food chain, my friend. But let's just say there's another bird that's on them. You've seen dog fights, right? Military, and they're, you know, this bird's just honing in on him. Man, they just about to get him. You know what he'll do? He'll turn and fly directly toward the sun. He'll close that other eyelid, and it's like he put on a pair of coasters. Are y'all with me? And he can fly directly to the sun, and the other bird is like, oh, I can't see. I can't maintain my, and they got to peel off because they can't hang with him. And what I want to tell you is this, no matter what condition you're in right now, fly toward the sun. Not S-U-N. S-O-N. If you'll point yourself toward the sun and fly toward him, everything else has got to peel back. I ain't never going to make it. Stand with me if you will. I wonder if you're here today. All heads are bowed and eyes are closed. And you say, Pastor, I'm weighted down. I feel like that eagle whose beak has got so much calcium, I can't even, my head, I can't hold it up no more. I'm, I'm, I'm walking around like a turkey. I've lost my feathers. I've lost my sight. I've lost my appetite. I'm just no good for nothing. My head's about and eyes are closed. Nobody's looking around. If you feel like that, would you just put your hand up and right back down? Come on, sir, ma'am. I see a few hands, several of you. Somebody else will wait for you for just a moment. Pastor, I want you to pray for me. I feel like a turkey and I'm born an eagle. Going through that molding process and I'm in a valley. I want to pray for you right now. And here's what I want to pray. That God would shine directly on you. And that you in that valley would say, I'm going to help myself. And you're going to take the food that I'm dropping for you today. And you're going to grab that food and start to eat and start to digest it. You're going to say, I'm not going to lay here and die. I'm not going to lay here. I'm not going to die in this valley when I was born to fly. <clears throat> so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these that are here today that they've struggled in their mind, in their, their heart, and their life. They're so messed up. They can't see like they used to see. They can't walk like they used to walk. Their head is down, and they, they walk like a turkey, and they were born an eagle. I pray, God, that you would give them strength today. I pray, God, that you would even take this meal that we're dropping right now. And may they grab that meal. May they begin to eat and, and consume that food. Lord, may they begin to get their strength back. May they begin to grow again. And may they begin to get up off of that ground, get on their feet, walk to the edge of that cliff and say, I think I'm going to try it again. I think I'm going to launch out there and do what God built me to do and be the majestic person that God made me to be. In the name of Jesus, I pray for us to exemplify that life of an eagle. And if we're in trouble, we'll run to the sun. If we're falling, we will understand that our Father can fly faster than we can fall. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated if you can. Our host is coming now. Let me remind you of our sing tonight. It is going to be an incredible time.